Good day, folks. Sean here from Air Photography. So the Avada was announced and launched last week from DJI. This is their latest FPV drone. Mine just arrived today, so we're going to just do a simple unboxing. Usually when it comes to major releases like this, I like to start with just a simple unboxing. We'll talk a little bit about it and uh, why I decided to upgrade to it. Now you can purchase this in a few different variations depending on your budget and what you're looking for. This combo here is called the ProView Combo, and that's because it comes with the new goggles the goggles too and this comes in at a price of 1388 us dollars you can also get the fly smart combo it comes with the older v2 goggles and it comes in at $1,168. Now you can also purchase just the drone itself because it is compatible. The Avada is compatible with the older V2 goggles and it's also compatible with the FPV controller. So anyways, let's get into it and uh, we'll see what all comes inside the box. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do an unboxing of the Flymore kit. I did order it separately because it was gonna delay my shipping and it's not scheduled to be delivered till late this week or early next week. So you can see we have this outer box and inside of that we have two smaller boxes. We have the drone there and then we have this combo here that has the controller, the motion controller and the new goggles. Now if you take a look at the boxes here you'll see kind of from the pictures that it does not come with a standard controller. If you do want a controller, a more traditional controller, you will have to purchase that separately and uh, that is very unfortunate. I'm not sure the reasoning why they decided to go with just the motion controller. I'm assuming there was a couple different factors involved. Ease of flight for beginners. Uh, some people mentioned they probably had lots of inventory of this that they needed to get rid of. You know, that could very well come into play. It's just kind of a shame that they didn't offer another package with the controller instead. Uh, because some people are going to end up with two of these now. And it's also another expense that you're going to have. So let's go ahead. We'll start with the drone itself here. So we'll open up the box here and you can see we have the drone in plastic wrap. We'll just set that aside here for a minute. We have the charger. We have a USB-C cable. This can be used for charging the drone, also for data transfer and updating firmware if you update it via a computer. And here we have a couple spare props. And that is it. So let's go ahead here and we'll take the Avada out. And uh, there it is there. It's actually quite small. It's a little bit smaller than uh, what it looked like in uh, some of the videos I've watched. You can see the battery was already pre-installed there, so we will have to go ahead and get that charged up so we can get the firmware updated. There is some firmware that is available if you do purchase it brand new, so you want to make sure you do that before you attempt to fly it. And take a look at the difference in battery size. You know, for people who want to travel with their FPV drone, these batteries are going to be much more travel friendly. Uh, they're about half the size, so, you know, they're not going to take up as much room in a camera bag, not as heavy. So we'll just take a quick look at the drone here. And uh, it actually feels very light without the uh, without the battery in there, and uh, very durable. That's one of the, um, the new features of this drone, is that it's quite durable. There's been tons of videos already posted on YouTube with this thing crashing, uh, some pretty intensely, and, uh, you know... Other than a few scratches, it survived. And it does feel very solid. It feels like it can take a hit or two. And uh, that's one nice thing that they've done this year is that they have made some of the components repairable, replaceable by the user. That includes this top frame here, this kind of shell roll cage, and these ducts here can be replaced as well. And other than the props, that's really all the user components that are currently available. They may add other ones in the future. With the original FPV, you could actually buy the whole camera assembly. Uh, so that's something that they may do down the road. Let's go ahead and we'll take off the gimbal cover and we'll take a look at the camera. That's another uh, thing that they've really improved this year. We now have a really good camera on it. And yeah, there doesn't really look to be much to it. You can see right through it. It's pretty uh, empty inside there. So I'm actually looking really forward to uh, getting out and flying that, which won't be today. Uh, sorry, I should say it will be today. Uh, the video won't be up today probably tomorrow we'll do like a first impressions review now for those who are curious i'll just put them side by side so you can kind of get a visual of the size difference now especially when the dji fpv has the props on you can see how much uh, larger how much space it takes up especially in a camera bag or backpack like this thing just is awkwardly shaped and uh, for most backpacks you have to take the propellers off which is kind of a pain to have to do uh, this thing is fairly thin you know, compared to the DJI FPV, so it's gonna slide in a backpack nicely. Portability of this is definitely gonna be a little bit easier. And lastly, let's take a look at their ND filters. DJI is selling a set of ND filters for it. I don't always use ND filters on my drones, uh, but definitely with FPV because you're moving quite fast. 
Uh, so you do want to get that motion blur just to make it look a little bit more appealing. Uh, a lot of times when I'm flying a Mavic, it's slow. So, you know, the effects of an ND filter aren't really noticeable. And uh, yeah, so that's basically them there. Kind of a standard DJI packaging for their ND filters. We've got an ND8, ND16, and ND32. And uh, let's just take a look at how they go on here. They're pretty small, pretty thin there. And it looks like they just pop in. Yep, just like that. You can hear a click. So let's go ahead here. We're going to open up the other box, take a look at the goggles and the motion controller. Now the motion controller is nothing new. Uh, we did see it released last year with the DJI FPV drone. Uh, but some of you might be new to it, so I'll still kind of go over it a little bit. So let's open things up here. Well, got the goggles here first, so let's uh, go ahead and take them out. Set them off to the side. And here we have everything else. We have the power cord for the goggles. You can see it's a little bit different. It's kind of got this stretchy part to it now, this coiled part, I should say. They also have these lenses here. And I do believe these are for people who want to have custom lenses made if you wear a certain prescription. Um, I do believe that's what those are for. Here we have the motion controller. Again, nothing new that we haven't already seen. Uh, this allows you to fly with gestures, basically moving your wrist. Um, I, for one, actually really like it. I have flown my DJI FPV with it quite a bit. Um, you know, you don't have the precision as a controller, and you probably aren't going to take as many risks with it. Now, it's kind of more of a novelty. Um, ideally, you're going to get better use out of the controller. Uh, normal controller, I should say. And uh, over here, we have the battery. And as you can see, it's very similar to the battery we have for the V2 goggles. Uh, there is a little bit of a difference here. They have a clip that holds this cable in. And uh, that is actually great news because I've actually pulled that out a few times on my FPV when I was flying. So, uh, you know, that's a nice feature. Uh, what I'm still a little unsure about is whether you can use the old battery with the new setup. If we take a look at the battery here, you can see there are some slight differences. As mentioned, there's not that little notch there. Uh, but other than that, they look pretty well identical. Now, if you look at the DJI website and you take a look at the new battery, it says it's compatible with the Goggles 2 and the Goggles V2. Whereas if you take a look at this battery here, the older battery, it says it's compatible with the original Goggles and the Goggles V2. It doesn't say anything about the Goggles 2, the newer style Goggles. So I don't know if they are compatible or not. The cable will plug into it, so that's something I will definitely test out. Now here we have the new strap for the new Goggles. And as you can see here, it's just a single strap instead of the one with the strap at the top as well. So that's uh, kind of nice. I actually like that style better. And lastly here, we have that connector that allows us to connect it to an iPhone. If you have an Android device and you need to plug your phone into the goggles, you can just use USB-C to USB-C. If you have something like an iPhone with a lightning connector, then you will need to use this adapter here, which is USB-C to USB-A. And then you can just use any iPhone cable that you currently have. So let me move all that stuff off to the side here and we'll take a look at the goggles. And uh, here they are here. And again, wow, I, you know, I've watched some videos and uh, everybody talks about how small they are now. But until you actually have them in hand here, uh, you can't really tell on video how actually small they are. Uh, they're very light too. I think uh, that's going to be really nice. Some of the big differences with these new goggles are is that it has fold out antennas. So you don't have to screw the antennas on at all anymore. It's got a new touchpad at the side. So some people like that, some people don't. Instead of buttons, you just do different swipe gestures. As you can see here, it has a new lens guard. And uh, that's a nice touch as well. Uh, they did have some third-party ones for the V2 goggles, which I did purchase. And, you know, they always came in handy. That helps prevent damage to the lenses by getting direct sunlight down in there. Now, the other thing that's different this year is that uh, with the older goggles, you know, we could do the adjust the diopters I think they're called I'm not even sure uh, but we could adjust the width of them you know that was the only adjustment we can make uh, but now we can adjust the focus as you can see here we can do each eye individually and you know that will come in beneficial for people who wear glasses I would wear glasses under my older goggles the v2 goggles uh, these ones look a lot smaller inside so I don't know if my glasses will fit in them um, when I do my first flight I'll kind of go over all that uh, but these ones I may not have to because I may be able to adjust the focus manually. So we'll definitely test that out. Uh, and lastly, of course, it's a higher resolution screen. It's now 1080 compared to 810 of the V2 goggles. And they are an OLED screen. So, you know, it's going to have a better image. So that is basically it. That's everything that comes inside the package. 
Um, like I said, I don't have the Flymore combo. Uh, it's not going to show up for a few more days. Uh, but basically, it's kind of like the Flymore combo for the DJI FPV. You get two batteries and a charging hub. Uh, the only difference is the charging hub on this one comes with four slots for charging. And it's actually quite a bit cheaper. I think it's $219, something like that. And that's compared to $299 for the DJI FPV drone. You know, so that's actually a nice welcome bonus. And these batteries are actually a little bit cheaper on their own as well. Say you buy the Flymore kit, but you just want one extra battery. You're going to be spending $125 for the battery instead of $159. You know, so anytime we can save a little bit of money, uh, that's actually a welcome bonus. So that's basically it. That's my unboxing. Uh, now I'm going to go get the batteries charged up and uh, get the firmware updated. Um, if you're new to this and you want to know how to update the firmware, let me know down in the comments because I will make a video uh, going over the steps, the different ways in which you can update the firmware. And of course I will be making all the regular videos that I normally make with a new release. I'll be doing a first flight probably tomorrow and then, you know, I'm not going to really do a full review until I've been flying it for at least a couple weeks. Usually I do it around the 30 day mark and in between there I'll be making some other videos, perhaps a beginner's guide. And uh, maybe some comparisons against the DJI, the, the original DJI FPV. Well, folks, I want to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.